Hello and welcome to this week's video. I'm going to be using a photograph of my son and some chipboards here that I've had for a little while and this Craft Sensations paper pack. So I'm going to take out one of the pieces here which has got a blue um, background and I'm going to be using this clock, the market, uh, sorry 49 in market and the dusty attic chipboards. I am painting them uh, just with a white uh, gesso paint and having painted them I'm now using a crackle glaze on the uh, clock this is a deco art media uh, crackle paint so you paint this on I'm painting it on quite um, muckily I guess this is the best one to use um, I'm kind of putting little, little bit lumps here and there because I don't want this clock to be perfect I want it to be sort of really distressed um, because this is going to be my basic focus on this page. Um, the crackle glaze is really, really nice. It gives a lovely effect. So you can actually apply this over um, a different colour if you want. So the crackle glaze itself is white and uh, you can put it over a black background or on anything really. So when it crackles, it shows what's underneath. But I tend not to use it like that. I tend to use it on a white um, piece of chipboard or piece of wood like this. And then I come in later on and add colour using textured pastes and waxes and things like that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with this. So I want to build the uh, paint on this up. So in some places I put it on really thick. I put it on so that it sort of... Um, hangs over the side of the letters just so that they don't look perfect. Um, this I've had this clock for a long time and it has actually ripped in one part uh, just between the two and the three so I um, have actually ripped it somewhere along the lines but this is pretty much 12 by 12 uh, size so it's going to fill up my page so I'm coming in here with the paint onto the paper so I'm gessoing this because I don't really want to see this pattern I like the color um, and uh, it's sort of a circular little flower patination on on this I don't really want it to be very bold when you see it I want you just to literally be able to just see little accents of the background so I am literally layering this gesso all the way over my page quite hard in the middle and then dragging that paint out into the edges just to give a little bit more texture um, so I'm dampening down the color and adding a little bit more texture to the background now that that has dried I'm sort of layering this up to see where I'm going to put everything so pretty much got a good idea of where everything is going to go um, to just popping those down just so that I'm happy with that and I'm going to come in and I'm going to get some various waxes and things out so I've got the um, creative expressions uh, the little small tub here so I'm going to use a couple of those colors as well they're um, gilding waxes and I have the uh, ink of gold which um, are absolutely fantastic so I'm going to be using a brown a yellowy gold and uh, a blacky black color in those so I'm just trying this out on the background just to see how I feel about these various colors I also going to use this one which is a champagne ice it's a deco arts um, metallic luster so I'm going to be building these up so literally want a little bit here and a little bit there all over this clock so I rub some of it on and I'm going to be using my cloth to sort of dampen down the colour and to spread it out as well. These do give a really lovely luster, um, really, really striking, um, glittery sort of um, feel when you're putting them on. And this isn't how I'm going to go what, I, what I'm trying to achieve with this at the moment so I'm just going to layer these up and I will come in and dampen these down now I decided that I best not use my table surface and so I got out my glass mat and now I'm just slowly layering a little bit here a little bit there um, dabbing some of it on with my finger where I want and then just sort of smudging it just so that it makes it a little bit more messy it's not 
uh, precise and and just filling in as I go along. So the idea is literally to keep building up and building up and building up until I've got this covered how I would like. As you can see here, you can see it's quite, they are quite shiny, um, but they come out absolutely fantastically and they highlight the crackle on this so much better. Uh, and this is tends to be the way that I use the, the, the crackle paste. I, I like it like this rather than using it um, to crack and see the colour from below. So uh, this is just really fun and we all love a little bit of finger painting. Just keep picking it up and having a look and uh, putting a little bit more colour here and a little bit more colour there. And just until this is completely covered up. The yellow is quite bright and I'm not liking it as much as um, like this. But I know that I'm going to come in and I'm going to dampen all this colour down and uh, take off the gloss and the shine of it. So um, it's it's all right. It, uh, it is coming along as, as I want it to. So I don't want this to be... Um, too bright so all of this is this layout is going to be quite muted um, by the by the end of this process so I decide to come in with a little bit of the blue so you've got the bit of blue in the background it's just going to give a little bit more um, color and definition to this in fact once I finish it off it will just be um, very grayed uh, so it won't be as bright a blue as that looks absolute gorgeous color this one um, and I'm going to come in with a little bit more uh, black and uh, put some of this around my page as well this one's quite a hard one I had to water it down a little bit um, I have my finger wet there to, to water it down and I do keep cleaning my finger and trying to make sure that I'm not mixing these colors with the different pots obviously you don't want to put any of the dark black or the brown into that bright yellow now I'm using a little bit more of the uh, the black along here just to darken it out a little bit and just to distress it a little bit more. Really loving how this looks. And the way I uh, take off that sheen and that shine to these colours is by using two distress inks. I've got uh, weathered, weathered wood and the other one was iced spruce. And this is literally going to come on over and give a little bit more um, colour, a little bit more depth, but also take off that shine because I don't want this to be too glittery and shiny. That's not the sort of look that I was going for. The photograph of my son is just a snapshot, uh, sorry, a selfie photograph that he was he was taking. Um, and I just quite think it's quite a sweet little photograph. So here I am gluing this one down. So I've applied glossy accents to the back and I'm just making sure that that's in the spot that I want it. Um, unfortunately, in moving that, uh, I got some of the glossy accents on the paper. And as we know, glossy accents is shiny. So this is going to be a, an annoyance. Um, but I do come in and fix that up later. Uh, and I also need to stick my photograph in there before that dries. So I'm just coming along just to sort of work out where I want to put these exactly. Um, because I do want to put a little bit of writing on this and I have found a stamp that I like and that I want to put in and I did think after I after I've done this that I should have um, put the stamp on before I stuck this down but I haven't scrapbooked in the best part of this week um, and seem to have forgotten all the things I always tell myself to you know not to do <laughs> not to stick something like this down before you've done the stamping on your page but oh well so I'm just working out where I'm going to put some foam pads to give um, some strength to this um, piece of chipboard. So this one is from Market 45. It's designed by Dusty Attic. I have quite a lot of Dusty Attic um, chipboard uh, pieces from 12 by 12 all the way down to tiny little ones. Absolutely love them. And uh, this was a fun way of using quite a lot of these. Um, this one was really sweet with the cogs. It's got another clock in it and it just just felt perfect. As we're about to head into the beginning of a new year, it felt like the right um, 
thing to be using, clocks and time and thinking about the passage of time. Um, so uh, I thought this was the perfect page to do this week. So I'm coming in with some glossy accents to stick this down and um, stuck that down the bottom there <clears throat> and um, just giving that a little bit more pressure just to, to stick it to make sure it holds. Uh, now this bird, I want the birds to be over the circle and they sit so perfectly where I want them. Um, coming in with this stamp that says to the world you may be one person but to one person you may be the world and I just really liked this sentiment and I'm stamping this and coming in with some wow enamel powders and this one is um, a gorgeous glittery one it uh, it has various colors of silver and gold so it goes with the um, clock and uh, sort of it's very distressed sort of look so it uh, it fits in with the clock but it's my bit of bit of bling the bit of glitter that I want on this page because it sparkles um, just popping some foam pads behind the flowers uh, behind the birds sorry and the flower that's in the middle of the circle I'm going to stick down um, on the page so that I don't need to put any um, any foam pads behind there and then everything else is going to sit on top of the uh, big clock so I won't need any foam pads on the rest of those um, but it will need some on the birds just to give it a little bit more strength and a little bit more support there. Um, this is really pretty, very very thin uh, leaves and uh, branches on this but it is so lovely and uh, so it, it is it is a lot stronger than you think it is um, so when you when you take it out uh, it's quite easy to pop out you just cut a couple of little bits where they're not cut through properly on the um, backing on the sheet that it's cut out of um, but it's it's not cut properly so that it holds in place and doesn't break and then it just looks superb there now I'm coming in with a little bit of dampened down colour, um, my gesso again, just to cover over the areas where I got a little bit of glossy accents. Um, this works perfectly, it just dampens down the gloss on it, so uh, you can't see where I've um, accidentally squished too much glue. And I just keep looking at this from various angles just to fill in various parts of this and literally dampen this down. It's just very, very dry brush that I'm going in, in with this. I'm not adding a lot more colour, just literally taking off that, that shine from, from the glossy accents, which is smear, smeared a little bit. Um, and it just give the perfect finish because I want this to mostly be matte. Um, so I've got uh, my writing on there, I've got to add this extra clock and I'm adding it partially over the photograph. I want it to add the circle um, and I'm going to stick it partially down on the paper in the middle and partially on top of the clock. Um, it is too fine, I would not be able to put any um, foam pads behind this, but because of where I've stuck it, it actually is really well secured and shouldn't uh, be damaged at all. Now I'm coming in with this um, 49 and Market uh, laser cut shapes here because I want a few more of the cogs to add a little bit more definition. So I'm going to have some stuck uh, down on the paper. So there you've got the ones that are raised higher and then you've got the lower ones. And I'm coming in with one of the cogs on, this, um, on the side. I'm going to cover where the most damage is to this frame just so that you can't see it. And I really liked this writing that says timeless. So that perfectly fits above my um, writing there. I just cut that, I snipped that because I thought it would be easier um, to get this writing out. It's quite delicate uh, and I didn't want it to break so I did just snip that off so that I can uh, better get the writing out. And I'm just here uh, sticking down these, clog these cogs in place and um, just again coming in with a little bit of paint. Um, and just to try to, uh, again, take the dampness off the uh, the shine that the paint, or the glossy accent, sorry, does give you, because um, we don't want to see that. So that is pretty much my page finished. Uh, just 
finishing touches around those cogs now that they have uh, dried and we come to the end. The one thing I did forget to film was uh, the placement of my little cat which when you see the photographs in a moment you will see where I've put her pride of place just uh, sat inside the clock and here's me just finishing off just making sure that, that brush is pretty dry and I'm not adding too much colour. There we go there's my page for today absolutely love the way this has turned out and the crackle glaze is amazing I hope this gets you out crafting and inspires you to get some artwork done and to play in your craft rooms okay take care and see you next week